I love it. I love it. Wow. <laughs> I love it. Look at this. This is, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Hey, I'm not surprised. Hey, what's poppin' my homies? Hope you're doing well, feeling blessed, having a good day, having a good week. This one's gonna be Rose Namajunas taking on Amanda Hebas. The main event's not bad. Now guys, last week, my bets were kinda dusty. Not fully dusty, but dusty enough to, to lose the card. Had a long shot bet on Barbarena. That didn't play out. I also had a bet on the Midwest chopper, Isaac Dolgarian. And in my opinion, that's a draw. And then I had Jacqueline Amorim. That's a good underdog. I knew she'd wrap up Corey. She just wrapped her up. And I said that, you know, young fighters, they go back to what they know best. And Corey couldn't do that, and she did that. So looking at the lineup overall, you know, those bets are dusty. But there's winning and there's losing, right? There's always this week. So let's go. And guys, there is two Money City winners. But both these winners, they should be losers. They should be losers. You see what I'm doing there? All right, guys, let's go. Moving into the first matchup of the card, we've got Mohamed Usman taking on Mick Parkin. So, guys, first of all, let's start by saying we've got a low-level heavyweight action matchup, right? Mohamed Usman only has 12 professional fights. And if we look at Mick Parkin, he's only had eight. So, yeah, quite a low-level matchup. But there is a couple differences between Mohamed Usman and Mick Parkin. If you look at Mohamed Usman, he's throwing punches to really dust the opponent. You know, he's throwing big power punches. Whereas, guys, when you look at Mick Parkin, it kind of looks like he's sparring. His technique is good. He likes to counter the opponent. But there's not a lot of speed. There's not a lot of power to, to the punches that Mick's throwing. And that's something I really noticed against the Brazilian dude, uh, Kyle. And he also got really tired. Like, super tired against Kyle. But then again, Mohamed Usman also doesn't have good cardio. So yeah, it's uh, a difficult matchup to pick. But yeah, guys, the main reason as to why I'm going to side with the underdog, Mohamed Usman, his throwing punches to actually hurt the opponent. And Mick Parkin looks like he's sparring. So give me the underdog. Give me Mohamed Usman. Moving into a matchup between Igor Severino taking on Andre Lima. Now, this is going to be Brazilian versus Brazilian. And guys, for some reason, I like those matchups. I don't know why. Anytime you've got a Brazilian going to battle with another Brazilian, I like those fights. Those are good fights. And guys, Andre Lima on the contender. The dude put on a striking clinic. And the opponent of Andre Lima on the contender, he kind of ran away. Like for the most part, he was just running away. But guys, you can see why. Andre Lima, man, the stand-up, the striking, is technically good. Very sharp. Now on the flip side, you've got Igor Severino. This dude isn't bad. But in my opinion, he would need to get Lima to the mat if he's going to win the fight. Like, you've got to get Lima to the mat. You're not going to stand with Lima. You're not going to strike with Lima. And the dude's a tough guy. You know, he's going to walk forward. He's going to throw punches. But Lima's good. Too sharp. Too sharp for Severino, in my opinion. So, guys, my breakdown on the matchup is pretty simple. If we stay on the feet, Andre Lima should uh, dust up Severino. If we go to the mat and Severino looks to play jiu-jitsu, then Severino could cash as an underdog. Two decent prospects, two Brazilians... I'm liking one prospect much more than the other. Give me Andre Lima. Now, guys, moving into a matchup between Montserrat Rendon taking on Daria Zelesniakova. Guys, if I got that right, you tell me. You tell me. Because people let me know when I get it wrong. You know, they'll go to the comments and say, you got that name wrong. You pronounce that wrong. Listen to that. Daria Zelesniakova. If I got that, you tell me that. And that shouldn't even be a name. That should be illegal. But yeah, essentially what we've got here is low-level women's mixed martial arts, as most of you know. Rendon is a jiu-jitsu world champion back in Mexico. She's not like a Jacqueline Amorim level jiu-jitsu. And if you look at Rendon's boxing, it's not bad. It's pretty decent. However, on the flip side, we've got a newcomer. And in my opinion, the boxing of the newcomer is a little bit better than Rendon. But guys, I do mention this all the time, and there's no doubt I'm going to mention it many more times. When it comes to mixed martial arts, women's mixed martial arts, you want to side more with the physicality rather than the technicality. And if we're doing that here, potentially the pick would be Rendon. But guys, I'm actually going to fade that strategy with this specific matchup. I actually think uh, Daria Zelesniakova, her boxing's a little bit better. And if the matchup stays on the feet, which I think it will... I think she's going to box her up. So their prediction is going to be Daria Zelesniakova. Moving into a matchup between Stephen Wynn taking on Jarno Ehrens. And guys, Jarno Ehrens, in my opinion, he's not that good. He's a kickboxer from the Netherlands. But in my opinion, he's not that good. And I did bet against Ehrens when he fought Choi. And he actually dropped Choi. He dropped him to the mat and still found a way to lose that fight and to cash my bet. Now, Stephen Wynn, his boxing's good. It's very sharp, very quick. So technically, I'd say Stephen Wynn is pretty good. The way he boxed up 
up AJ Cunningham and we spoke about AJ a few weeks ago and what we mentioned with that was AJ's striking defense is really bad so to see Stephen Wynn box him up like that it was kind of expected right now John O'Aaron's in my opinion he's not good but he is a step up from AJ he's still a step up so yeah guys in my opinion if the matchup stays on the feet we should see Stephen Wynn really box with John O'Aaron's you know box him up if the matchup goes to the mat more than likely John O'Aaron's is the one taking it there right but in my opinion the pick has to be Stephen Wynn you know that's the pick and guys the only way I can see Stephen Wynn not winning the matchup the only way I can see that is if he gets tired. You know, the cardio just turns to dust. But in my opinion, the pick has still got to be Stephen Wynn. Moving into a matchup between Miles Johns taking on Cody Gibson. Guys, Cody Gibson against Brad Katona. Can we speak about that? Pure madness. That's a mad fight. Like an insane fight. If you've not seen Brad Katona against Cody Gibson, go watch that. It's a real fight. A mad fight. A bar fight. That's what it looked like. But then again, a bar fight's not going 15 minutes. It's going 15 seconds. But in terms of ugliness, that's what it looked like. It was an ugly fight. A real fight. Now, guys, Cody Gibson defensively is not great. He leaves his chin in the air. He is aggressive, though. He'll march forward, right? Which means the overhand right of Miles Johns is going to be there. And, guys, Miles Johns is primarily a wrestler. But his calf kick is good. The overhand right. The hooks to the body. They're all good weapons for Miles Johns. However, guys, the cardio of Miles Johns is not that great. When you start to really tee off, on Miles Johns. He will quit. We've seen that more than once. And guys, that's interesting because if you look at Cody Gibson in his last fight, just based on that, he doesn't know what quitting is. He's going to march forward. He's not going to quit. Whereas Miles Johns, you know, when the going gets tough, you can make him quit. So just based on that, give me the dog, Cody Gibson. And he really is a dog. Moving into a matchup between Julian Arosa taking on Ricardo Ramos. Now, guys, here's the thing. If you enjoy entertainment, then you're going to enjoy a fight between Julian Arosa and Ricardo Ramos because someone's getting dusted. Ricardo Ramos has never had good cardio. He's never really been a good striker. He's primarily a grappler, a decent jujitsu player. Even though Charles Jordan choked him out, his jujitsu is still good. But more than likely, he's going to need to get Julian Arosa to the mat. Or maybe he doesn't need to get Julian Arosa to the mat because Julian Arosa, the chin, is pure dust. Pure glass. Arosa usually has his hands down and his chin's in the sky. And because his chin's dusty and his hands are down, it's kind of a recipe to get dusted. But guys, don't forget, Arosa will wrap up dust chokes late in the fight. You know, wrapped up Sean Woodson, wrapped up Charles Jourdain. So that shows you that if the fight goes late and Ramos gets tired, and he does get tired, Arosa can wrap him up. Guys, in my opinion, there's red flags to both sides. Because if you're picking Ramos, he's got bad cardio. And his striking's not great. And Arosa's got a dusty jaw. But we've got to make a pick. And in my opinion, if Ramos fatigues, we're going to see Arosa find a dust choke or find a KO stoppage. So give me another underdog. Give me Juicy J, Julian Arosa. Moving into a matchup between Trey Ogden taking on Kurt Hollibar. Now, guys, we've got to give a lot of credit to Trey Ogden. I'm telling you, when you look at Trey Ogden with the jab, he put on a masterclass against Nicholas Motta. The jab all night he was making motta run into the jab he was looking great but guys the ref messed it up so the fight goes down as a no contest but obviously we all know the truth you know trey ogden looked great busted up nicholas motta dusted now the opponent's got hollabar this guy's a scrappy guy a tough guy a decent boxer you know he'll stand in the pocket he'll trade some punches that fight he had against jason knight oh my goodness madness and he recently got his first win against austin hubbard and it was also via triangle choke now guys here's the thing in my opinion, Trey Ogden's a better grappler than Kurt, right? So if it goes to the mat, Trey should do good. But if it stays on the feet, I think Kurt's a better boxer. And some people might say, well, look at Trey with the jab against Nicholas. In my opinion, I kind of feel like that was a once-in-a-lifetime performance for Trey Ogden on the feet. But if he proves me wrong, all the credit. You know, if he can do that again, all the credit. And there is an old saying that if you can do it once, you can do it twice. So I guess he could do it again, but... Yeah, but stays on the feet. I do favour Kurt. I favour the underdog. Guys, give me another underdog. Give me Kurt to keep it on the feet and to box with Trey Ogden. Moving into a matchup between Luis Pahalo taking on Fernando Padilla. And guys, I'd have to say the UFC have done it again. They've done it again. They've found a way to make a fire matchup without putting superstars in a fight. You know, these are two guys that most people don't know. Most people don't know Fernando Padilla. Most people don't know who Pahalo is. So guys, when people tune in to watch this fight, they don't really know what to expect. But I'm telling you right now, you've got a fire matchup. 
you have got a fire fire. Same as last week with Danny Silva and Josh Koulibau. It's the same thing. Both these guys are boxers. Both these guys are going to box. No one's running away in this fight. They're going to stand and trade. And if you like boxing, you're going to like this fight. You're going to like Luis Pajelo versus Fernando Padilla. Now, guys, here's the thing. Unlike the Josh Koulibau and Danny Silva fight that went 15 minutes, my main prediction is this matchup doesn't go the distance. But making a pick, give me Fernando Padilla to get the stoppage. But guys, Luis Pajelo, he rips at the body. He's aggressive. So yeah, guys, in my opinion, don't miss this scrap. It's going to be a scrap. Both these guys are going to go to war. Give me Fernando Padilla. Moving into a matchup between Billy Q taking on Yusuf Salau. Another decent matchup. And guys, Billy Q, he's a fan favorite, right? Purely down to the fact he's an absolute dog. Guys, defensively, Billy Q's not good. But that's what makes him a dog. You know, the fact that he's getting beat up. He's getting teed off on. But he remains in the fight. He stays in the fight. If you want to beat Billy Q inside the distance he's not gonna quit you've got to send him to ben askren the king of shadow city but yeah guys look for billy q to essentially push Zalau against the fence look for billy q to dirty box but on the flip side you've not really got that with yusuf Zalau. yusuf is more technical he wants to use more of his footwork more of his speed so that's really what you've got you've got billy q that wants to make it ugly you know push you against the fence dirty box and then you've got yusuf that wants to stay on the outside you know, keep the fight at distance. Keep it cleaner. So again, the UFC, again, a good matchup. Two contrasting styles. And that makes good entertainment. Because if Billy Q clinches up, if Billy Q gets it to the mat, if Billy Q makes it ugly, Zalau's not used to that. Zalau don't want that. And if Zalau stays at distance, Billy's going to be like, come on, let's go. Let's fight. Let's throw down. So decent matchmaking again. And guys, in my opinion, if you take Billy Quarantillo, do it after round one. At least let him lose round one. He may lose round one. And that's because Zalau's on his bike. You know, he's not engaging. Bet Billy Q in play. Don't do it pre-fight. The pick is Billy Quarantillo. Moving into a matchup between Peyton Talbot taking on Cameron Simon. And guys, prospect versus prospect. This is a fire matchup. The best fight on the card, in my opinion. Guys, the way I want to sum up this fight. I did say prospect versus prospect. But I want to sum it up a little bit more. This is brutality versus technicality Peyton Talbot's brutal you know he's gonna walk forward he's gonna take your best punches his chin is made of granite this guy must headbutt metal for breakfast you know that's that's the guy's chin but his takedown defense is really not good but he'll do things like flip on a single leg to avoid being taken to the mat now Cameron Simon he's more technical he's more about speed he's more about keeping it looking clean and he had a good scrap with Christian Rodriguez and guys Christian Rodriguez getting it done again the prospect killer continues come on now in my opinion he lost but it's kind of surprising that no one judge had 28 28 yeah guys Peyton Talbot against Cameron Simon don't miss this scrap this is a real prospect versus prospect fight. Give me the brutality. Give me Peyton Talbot. His defense ain't good. And Cameron Simon could potentially win round one. But I just like the way he's constantly walking forward. He's so aggressive. And like I said, even if you hit him with your best shot, he remains there. And I just think he's going to break Cameron Simon. So yeah, Peyton Talbot, that's the pick. Moving into a matchup between Edmund Shabazian taking on AJ Dobson. Now guys, if I'm talking rubbish, tell me. Go to the comments and tell me. Edmund Shabazian, I think his ribs are inverted. I think he's got inverted ribs. I don't know for sure. I've not heard him confirm it. But as far as I'm concerned, it looks like his ribs are inverted. And that would kind of explain the bad cardio. His cardio is so bad. Like, terrible. There's been multiple fires that have gone in there and broke Edmund, right? But is AJ Dobson going to be one of those guys? Is AJ going to do that? Guys, based on the tape, Edmund should win this fight. He should go in there and, and manage the fight, you know, control the fight. But if you're AJ, if you lose round one, in your mind, the fight's just starting. You know, round two, the fight's just starting. Because that's really what you've got to do against Edmund. You know, you're looking to make him tired. Even if you lose round one, that's fine, right? But if he gets tired, you've got to take over. Now, guys, I'm going to say that based on the tape, Edmund beats AJ. That's my pick. But obviously, I know how it gets dusted. That prediction doesn't get dusted based on AJ being technically better than Edmund. It gets dusted because Edmund's cardio is pure dust. But you've got to pick and choose, like, who's going to fatigue Edmund? We know Fluffy Hernandez, the guy's a monster. We know Jack Amanson. He's a madman. You've essentially got to pick and choose which fighter's going to bring out that bad cardio. I don't think AJ's the man to do it. So give me Edmund, the golden gasser, to get it done. Guys, moving into the co-main event, we've got Justin Taffer taking on Carl Williams. And in my opinion... Justin Taffer all day. All day. Guys, I'm watching tape, right? I'm watching tape on Carl Williams. Why is he running away from Chase Sherman? Guys, 
Chase Sherman. Chase Sherman's on the same level as Josh Parisian. Maybe slightly above Josh Parisian. He's running away on the feet from Chase Sherman. Can you believe that? Now, guys, if you had to pick, who would you rather get hit by? Chase Sherman or Justin Taffer? Right, okay, so Carl Williams needs to get Justin Taffer to the mat. If he doesn't get him to the mat, look for Carl Williams to go to sleep at some point. But guys, in all fairness, the takedowns of Carl Williams, they are pretty strong. You know, his takedowns are good. He'll really drive through on the takedown. But in my opinion, if it stays on the feet, Justin Taffer, the walk-off KO, is prime. Give me Taffer. Now, moving into the main event, we've got Rose Namajunas taking on Amanda Hebas. A good main event. It's a good main event. Now, if you're someone that wants to bet on this fight and you want to bet on who's the technically better fighter, in that case, you're going to bet on Rose Namajunas. Rose is technically really good, and that's what made her a champion, right? It's not the fact that she's really powerful. It's the fact that she just became a, a technical beast. Such a technically brilliant fire. Her striking's really good. So if you're making a bet from a technical standpoint, then the bet is going to be Rose Namajunas. However, she's made a few mil. She's won the championship twice. And in my opinion, she's not in her prime. Does that mean she can't win the fight? It doesn't mean that. It just means you're potentially catching Rose at a good time. Now, Amanda Hebas... Her grappling's very good. She's very scrappy, very tough. And guys, I took Macy Barber, like, plus 200 against Ebas. And I also took Amanda against Luana Pinheiro. So I lost two matchups. I've got them right. I also took Manofia Rowe against Rose, as anybody would, right? But guys, like I said, Rose is technically good. She's not going to bully Amanda Hebas like Macy Barber. Guys, women's mixed martial arts, it's a nightmare to predict, right? But I'm going to go with my intuition, and it could be wrong, but... Give me the plus 200 underdog. Give me Amanda Hebas. Guys, I just think with Trevor Whitman not being in the corner of Rose Namajunas and also Rose being past her prime, I can see Amanda Hebas kind of finding a choke. Now, guys, the fighter that's more proven, it's going to be Rose. The fighter that's got more hunger, it's going to be Hebas. The fighter that's more technical, it's going to be Rose. The fighter that's got the better grappling, it's going to be Hebas. And some people will say, yeah, but Rose does have good grappling. And she does. But will she out grapple Mackenzie Dern? Rebass out grappled Mackenzie Dern. So yeah, this is a good matchup. And if it turns ugly 15 minutes in, give me the fighter that's not been there. Give me the fighter that's not been to the top of the mountain. Give me Amanda Hebas. Give me the big underdog. As always, guys, let me know you're taking in the main event, the co-main event, your money city bets. And as always, keep your eyes to the sky and never glue to your shoes. Peace.